Wait, what's this? Looks like raccoon tracks. And they go underneath my car. Is there a raccoon in my engine bay? Okay, before we start, I need to check and see if there's any critters in the engine bay. Eh, I don't see anything. I think we're okay. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Some of you may remember the last time I went to the drag strip, the transmission in the basket case BMW wasn't shifting properly. When I let the transmission shift automatically, it would short shift. When I tried to shift it manually, it didn't want to shift at all. At first I thought maybe I messed up something in the programming. So I went through the tune and tried to find something wrong, but I couldn't find any problems. So I thought maybe the transmission fluid was low. Unfortunately this car doesn't have a dipstick for the transmission. Checking the fluid level requires jacking up the whole car and making sure it's level. Then you have to start the engine, get under the car, and open up the fill port with the engine running. Then you try to pump fluid into the transmission until it starts to spill out. All that hassle just to check the fluid level. But anyway, it was about a half quart low. I'm not sure if that was enough to cause it to shift improperly. I also noticed sometimes there would be a warning light on the dash, commonly referred to as the cog of death, which means there's a trouble code for the transmission. It was not uncommon for this to happen on cold startup. If I shut off the car and started it again, the warning light would go away. I figured maybe this could be related to the shifting problem. So I waited for the warning light to come on again and looked for the trouble code. Unfortunately, the INPA software is in German and I don't speak German. But according to Google Translate, this trouble code refers to the gear selector switch. This transmission is computer controlled and the computer uses that switch to monitor what position the shifter is in. So if the switch goes bad, the computer doesn't know what the shifter is doing and it gets confused. Hence the bad shifting. I've read about this on the E46 Fanatics web forum. Actually there's a great write up on the forum explaining how to repair the gear selector switch. That switch is pretty pricey so if I can fix it instead of replacing it, That'll save me some money. My car has the ZF or ZF 5HP19 transmission. And the gear selector switch is on the left side of the transmission right above the oil pan. Full disclosure, this is a shot of it after the repair. I didn't get any video of the removal process. Okay, here's the gear selector switch removed from the car. The wires used to be covered in wire loom, but it disintegrated. It literally crumbled in my hands. To repair the switch, we need to take it apart. There are a bunch of rivets holding it together. You can drill them out or knock them out with a punch. The rivets are soft aluminum, so I decided to use a punch. Now we can pull it apart. Looking inside the switch, it appears to be a rotary switch with wiper contacts. If those wipers aren't making good contact, the switch won't work properly. Speaking of which, when I looked closely at the contacts, I can see they had some carbon deposits. Also, those little fingers in the center part seem to have lost some of their tension. 
they weren't making very good contact. So I used some very fine sandpaper to clean off the carbon deposits. I think it was 1500 grit. I had to be really gentle with it because those little fingers are very delicate. I also used a pocket screwdriver to gently bend the fingers a little bit so they make better contact. Last but not least, I noticed the grease inside the switch was drying out. So I cleaned that out and put some fresh dielectric grease in there. That should help prevent carbon buildup in the future. At this point, the switch is ready to reassemble. So I put some silicone grease on the seals and put it back together. Unfortunately, I couldn't reuse the rivets. So I got some screws from the hardware store. They're 4mm diameter, 16mm long, with nuts and lock washers. I also installed a fresh piece of wire loom and cleaned all the schmoo off the electrical plug. Looks almost like new. Now let's put it back in the car. And here it is, back in the car. But the big question is, did that fix the problem with the transmission? Let's start her up and see if we still get that warning light. Well, no cog of death today, thank you very much. But the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, or in this case, in the driving. So I took a drive to Mexico for some testing. Unfortunately, it took a long time to get there. By the time I got there, it was late at night. Anyway, let's give her the beans and see if the transmission behaves. Holy unintentional burnouts, Batman! Figures, the one time I did not want to do a burnout, the car decides to do one. Let's try this again and see if it'll hook up. Now that's more like it. And on that note, we're going to end this video. Thanks for watching.